good. So last week we went through the strings and started to look at uh, different uh, basic principles of Python using strings. And now we're going to see all the built-in types which are useful. It's not all of the built-in types in Python I'm going through. It's only the most useful, the one people tend to use most. So uh, we're going, there are three different types we're going through, the lists, the tuples, and the dictionaries. After we're going to see how to copy object. And uh, finally, we're going to do a few kind of exercises uh, just to go through writing Python and seeing a few interesting methods of these built-in types. Okay, so let's start with list. What is a list? A list looks like an array, but it's not an array. Uh, it's very important. A list is always one dimension. Um, and list can and will often have elements of different types, whereas when you think of arrays, you usually think of one type and several dimension. Um, I haven't checked everything, but I would say you can probably have any object as an element of a list. An element of a list can be another list, can be a string, a number, an array, a function, you know, the list go on. So, uh, what is a list useful for? Well, it allows you to create a collection of objects. And um, these objects can have a relation between them or not. It just, it's a kind of a basic collection type. So how do you know you have a list? So a list, use the square bracket like this. So if you simply do uh, two square brackets like this, you um, define an empty list. If you put elements separated by a comma, you um, define a list with two elements. And if you see here, I have a first list with those brackets. And then the first element is itself a list of two elements. And then there's a comma for the second element. Of my and lists are very nice because it's very easy to add elements to it with a method that's called append. We'll see another one later. So if I run this, you know, my first list lands, and if you remember, we saw the length function last week for um, knowing the length of an object. So my first list is two elements. My second list is also two elements, um, even if it looks like there's three, because the first one, first element is a list. And then you see that after append, my list just get an extra element added to it. Yeah. Okay, so lists are indexable, obviously. You can get to each element one at a time. A uh, person says subscriptable, and that's the one you would get in error messages, for example. So remember this one. And you can use a list to build a loop on. So if you want to access all the elements in a list, you can just do for and in your list. And and we'll go through all the elements of the list. Um, you don't need, again, to go through a range of numbers. And go each okay, important things. Elements of a list can be changed. And that means that lists are mutable objects. And what it means is that um, I can do something like that. I can say I want the element zero and I assign to it a new value. And it will be happy. And I have, I have this list A, B first, and now I have this list um, here. Why do I have? Yeah, so this, this was my first element. A, B was my first element. It was a list. Now I want it to be a string. And it just replaced the list by a string. It doesn't matter. Um, yeah. So elements don't have to keep their type or anything like that. You can just replace by whatever you want. So when I say list are mutable objects, it's different from list are indexable or subscriptable. If you remember, strings are indexable, but they are immutable objects. 
you can't change it element by element. So if I take a string like Claire again, and I want to change the C to a Z by doing it this way, have them tell me, error, string object does not support item assignment. That's what an item assignment is. Okay. So, um, subscriptable and mutable are two different things. Um, so now, if you have a subscriptable object as a list element, how do you access its element subscripts? For example, my um, li list is this list. So my first element is the string u, which is subscriptable since it's a, since it's a string. How do I know what is the last character of my um, how do I access the last character of my string? So you do, I have my list, I want its first element, I want the last element of this first element. So it's two square bracket indexes like that. If you try to do that uh, with an element that's non-subscriptible, for example, the second element of my list is just a number, so it's not subscriptible, uh, you'll get this error message. And that's why it's nice to know what subscriptable means because that's in the error message. Um, any questions so far around all of this? No. Okay, so how do you convert an object to a list? Actually, you have uh, two things. Um, Python has a function called list. And if I apply it to a string, for example, and I want this as a list, it would return this. So it takes each element of my iterable object and each element becomes an element in the list. Okay. It's different from doing, if I do it like that, I still get a list. But then I simply say, I want my string to be the first element of the list. Right? So you see the difference between the function list and simply using the square bracket to create a list. And you see that um, here, every element of the list created is a string itself, uh, because that was a string at the start. Okay, so that's it for the list um, for now. There's another um, type in Python that looks a lot like list. It's called tuples. They're typically immutable list. Um, that means you can't change just an element of a tuple, you have to change a whole tuple. And they are less used than list, but I think sometimes uh, they should be more used. They can be very useful to keep things that you don't want to inadvertently change in your code. For example, if you have a list of constants, for example, you don't want to just change it without realizing it. Uh, with a bug, for example, or you could have a collection of names of experiments, paths, models, whatever. Um, which, again, you might not want to change during your code. And defining it as a tuple uh, allows you more um, error tracking of your code. So the tuple looks a bit like list, except it's just a parenthesis to define a tuple. Uh, it's again, elements are separated by a comma. It turns out that for tuples, parentheses are optional. So if you have just a variable equal several elements divided by, uh, separated by comma, it will create a tuple, tuple. And if you want to create one element tuple, you need a comma. And that's simply because parentheses are also uh, used you know, for, for any other um, in calculation uh, when you have parentheses or to call a function or stuff like that. So, uh, having the comma at the end allows Python to know you want to create a tuple. 
Dans, um, yeah. You see, T is defined as a tuple. And as I said earlier, they're immutable. So if I try to do um, an atom assignment, it will again tell me zero, the same error as I had with the strings. To convert to tuple, here again, you have a tuple function and it works exactly the same as list. Um, if I have a list and I transform it in tuple, tuple is like this. Um, so in the first case, it takes each element of the list and becomes each element of the list become an element of my tuple. If I just use the parentheses with a comma, my whole list become the first element of my tuple and the one element. Is that clear so far? Okay. So to okay. define a tuple, it's square bracket? No, a list no. Is square bracket and a tuple is round bracket? So a tuple is parentheses. Okay. Okay. And so if you have just one element, you need a comma to tell person you want a tuple. Because parentheses are used, you know, for A plus B, for example, it's, you can have it in, in mass functions or stuff like that. Uh, whereas list is square bracket. Yeah. Okay, so, so why do we talk so much about mutable and immutable? Because that's a, it's has to do with how Python manages memory. To reduce the memory footprint of a program, Python tries to use to make pointers instead of copying uh, the values. Okay. So this means that if two variables are the same mutable object, both will change if an element of one is changed. Okay. So here, for example, I've a list, one, two, three, and I say list two equal list, and I want to change the first element of list two, and it turns out that when I do that, I change it in list one and list two. Okay, so list two is not a copy of list, it's simply a pointer to the same place in memory. So if I change list two by element, it will change list one as well. At the opposite, if you don't assign things, if you don't change things by element, but you reassign a list, even if it's the same one as the first one, then you create a new object in memory. So in this case, list two stays the same as it was before, and list one has been changed, so they're not anymore pointing to the same place in memory. Okay. So it's something to be careful of. When you do uh, a code like this, you don't necessarily make a copy. So be careful with what you're doing after. So the easiest way to make a copy of a mutable object is with the list and dictionary functions. We are going to see dictionary after. Um, so these will really do a copy. So if instead of list to equal list here, I do list, like that, then you see that my first list doesn't change and my second list has changed. So I've created a copy this way. So that's why it's also good to know this function list and top of the dictionary. Um, there is one catch uh, that these functions usually only do what is called a shallow copy. It's usually enough, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Uh, there are ways to make deep copies of mutable objects. Um, and we'll see at the end how to do that, depending on time. Um, and I don't talk about the tuple function here because it's impossible to change only one element of an immutable object. So um, this can't be done and you'll never have the problem of um, changing 
an element of uh, top of that you don't but, want to change. So sorry, Clara, can I ask one question here? Yeah. So uh, here you first define the list like li and then li2. Mm -hmm. When you change to first element like zero to two, it changes in both. Yep. But in the next step, you define the separate list like li equal to bracket one, two, three. So my question is, suppose if I have big data and mm -hmm. I want to change some values inside the data rather than defining the new list so how can i do that rather than change defining the new list but i just want to define the new variable and want so to so when you want so sorry when you want to change just a few values yeah. you want to keep both versions like the old values and the new values or do you just want the new values J just i want to new values if you just want the new new values you don't need to define a new so let's do it um, if I have my list equal one, two, three, and I want to change the first value to two, I can simply use the same list again and just say this, and it just be changed there. I do not need I do not need a copy or another list to do that. Okay, yeah, thank right. you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you want to keep both versions, then you need to do a copy, obviously. But and I mean, you can imagine you can't have both versions if you don't have. And, and yeah. no, no response to your comment. If if I if I want to keep both, yeah. So if you want to keep both, then you would you would need to do a copy with a list, for example, or a different uh, function depending on your object. But mm -hmm. you would have to do that, create a new object with a copy, and then you can change the values. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? No. Okay. Okay, so there's one more um, type we want, I want to go through, which is called dictionaries in Python. In other languages, it can be called structures or something like that. Um, so it, uh, it's also, again, a way to keep a collection of values, but it allows you to label your values. So you can uh, refer to your values by name instead of position. Uh, here in this case, I took an example. If you want to keep uh, the description of a grid, for example, you may want to have a name, a first longitude, first latitude, last longitude, last, long, last latitude, and a resolution. And so you can define all this in one object that's called a dictionary, and then have it all well together ordered. And so to define a dictionary, you simply use a curly bra uh, bracket. And then you attribute a label or key in Python, which is always a string, colon, the value, which can be whatever you want. And then a comma, the next, the next label, colon, yeah, comma, yeah. And then you close with a curly bracket. Yeah. So if I, I define, think, yes, I, I think I'm very strongly think that uh, there's no restrictions on what type of, of yeah, I, I, object I, I, I the key through is. that after. Um, I just, okay, so it's not always so. Yeah, because you said it's always a, a string. It doesn't have to be always a string. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, no. I don't go through that, but usually everyone uses strings most of most of the time. So if I look, go, if I execute this, my dictionary looks like this, um, and you see it printed with a curly braces to set the dictionary. So it's easy. And so now, if I want to access the values, I can use d and um, the square bracket, square bracket for indexing. But then I can just simply use the key or the label uh, to access the value. So I can access by name instead of position in a list or something like that, which is uh, useful sometimes. Um, so I was not going to go through the top of the keys, but the, for the top of the values, 
um, they can be as complicated as you want, pretty much, uh, or objects. Um, and here I gave an example, instead of having two keys here, first long, first lat, I could have one key that is first point and put the two, sorry, the two values into a dictionary itself. So, you know, I could define a dictionary, which is just the longitude and latitude of my first point. And then define a second dictionary with the longitude and latitude of the second point. I define it like that because just to show you how it can be defined like that. Um, here I take a copy of my first point dictionary and then I attribute a new value for each of the keys. And so here I have a dictionary with my first point of my grid and a dictionary with the coordinates of my last point of the grid. And then I can define another dictionary that is um, that only has a label first point and that has the dictionary as a value another diction the point zero dictionary and then point one dictionary here. And you can see that um, the first point is itself a dictionary. And if I want to access the longitude of the first point, it's a bit like the list. You know, you do a square bracket first point and a square bracket longitude. And you get that longitude. Do you have any questions about dictionaries? These are um, used a lot around um, because it's very useful to be able to access values by name rather than position. So, um, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, how do you get the keys and the values, for example, if you don't know all of them? Uh, the dictionaries have methods. So, the keys method will give you uh, all the keys of your dictionary, the values method will give you all the values. And you can get the pair of keys and values. And you can see with this loop that in fact in Python, you can have several variables in a for loop. Uh, it's not just, you, you don't only have one uh, loop variable necessarily, you can have two, three, four, I mean. So, um, because the items method returns two values, it returns the keys and the values. And this will be stored in two different variables. Um, so if I go through, um, here, you know, the first loop gives you only the keys there. The second loop gives you only the values. The third loop, you see, I print key and value. So it prints the key and the value that correspond to it. And you can see that if I just loop through items and attribute it to one, um, one object only, actually item uh, return a tuple um, like that of two elements. So the thing with, so dictionary are mutable objects, so you can add, um, keys and values to it. And to add a key that doesn't already exist, you simply say dictionary, square bracket, you put the name here, whatever you want, echo the value you want. And you see that um, it created a new key value pair uh, in my dictionary. Okay, are there any questions here? So, um, after it's more kind of exercises kind of thing, uh, except the first one is not so much of an exercise, but I just wanted to introduce something that people tend to forget about, but can be very useful um, if you remember it and take the time to understand it. 
Um, so if you remember the string formatting we saw the F strings last week, it turns out that with dictionaries, the dot format um, method of the string object can be very useful. So let's go back with our dictionary of grid where we have the name, the first point, last point, and resolution. And then uh, instead of doing a simple print of the dictionary, I want to print in a nice sentence that I have a grid that has resolution, whatever, starts at this point and ends at this point. So if I use the F string format, it looks like this. You see that a lot of typing of these square brackets and you need to have um, single apostrophes and double apostrophes and not get lost in it. If I use the format um, method, I can write it this way, which is a lot more readable, I find, personally because you just have the curly bracket around the special uh, places you want to replace by value. And what happens here is this thing I want to discuss, uh, what the double asterisk D does. The double asterisk operator allows to take a dictionary of key value pairs and unpack it into keyword arguments in a function call. So all the key value pair of D will become keyword arguments. So this here will become name equal my grid. And then there will be comma, first point equal uh, point zero, and comma, so on. So that you see that because of the way format method works, uh, name will be, here will be replaced by the value which is my grid and so on. So if I run it, you see, it works as expected. You get the, both, both methods work like this, as expected. You get the right value where you want. But this can give you a very readable way of um, writing your code. Uh, it's also very useful, can be very useful, for example, to define plot characteristics. So you know when you want to define the thickness of your lines, uh, I don't know, what, the color table or whatever, instead of having a very long plot line, you may want to, put a dic to create a dictionary of all your plot characteristics and then simply do asterisk, asterisk dictionary at the end of your plot line and then it will define it. And this way you can reuse the same plot characteristics on different plots very easily without a copy pasting a uh, huge line. There is also a single asterisk operator. We're not going to see it here right away. Um, the single operator is, is used with lists and tuples um, and you can go through there to see um, how it's used in details. It's a very good page. It has things we haven't seen. Um, but I don't think there were a lot of very difficult things. Uh, so, yeah, it's based sorrow on the use of asterisks in Python and how to use them. Any questions on this? Or does it look like way, be, way beyond what you're going to use? <laughs> okay. Okay, so the first exercise I wanted to do, I, I've changed a bit the format here of the notebook after sending it, but it's okay. It's typically how to split a string along a separator. Um, so what I wanted to look at is, do you remember how to get the inline help of, um, in a Jupyter Notebook. Anyone? Okay. So, if I'm thinking, oh, it's a string, Python surely has the method to split a string. So I can do a dot 
tab. Sorry, tab, give it a bit of time. And it lists all the all the methods available. And I can look through it, can let you look through it if you want. Uh, but if you look and try to find one that looks promising, uh, there's one that's called split. So it's, it seems like a good candidate. So you click on it and you put the parentheses and then you can press tab, uh, shift tab would be better. Why it doesn't want to do that one? Not what I wanted to do. Sorry. I don't know why it's not working as I expected. Anyway, uh, normally you can have some help that tells you what to expect in here and what it does. Am I wrong? Oh, girl. I was pretty sure it was. No, that's not going to. No, work. I, I. What I usually do is I just put a question mark at the beginning of that, so I would put. Yeah, you can. Question mark a dot split. Anyway, you can. Oops. No, then you would have to remove the parentheses. Okay. So if you do it this way, there are several ways to do it anyway. It tells you return a list of the words in the string using a separator as a delimiter string. So it seems to be what we want to do. And you can see that it has an, one argument that's called sep, the delimiter according to which to split the string. And it has a max split, the maximum number of splits to do. Um, the default value means there's no limit, so it will do all the splits it finds. Um, so if we try to use that, you see that if we do, so the argument called sep equal like this, to so split along the underscores, um, we get a list with a square bracket of all the elements of the string without the separator. It removes the separator. Does that seem right so far? Okay. Um, as you can guess, if we can split a string, maybe we can join a string as well. Um, you there are several ways to join a string. You could go the hard way because Python can um, add String, so you could do a equal l of zero plus an underscore plus l of one plus so on and so on. And you can see that. And this will work. It, 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 puts, it puts the thing together, but if you have a very long list, uh, you're going to be very be so or you're going to have to write a loop and so on and so on um but it turns out person has a method uh to join so we're going to go through it here without doing it because it's a bit more complicated if you see we want to rewrite this from the list and you see that um it has separators that are underscores it has separators that are um dash and separators that are dots. So you have to put it in the right order so that it does it well. So the way you do it is you do a string that's your separator dot join the elements you want to join with the separator. So if we do it one by one, I do this. You see, it took, so minus two to the end, minus one, minus two, it took this element and this element and put a dot in between. Okay. 
okay what happens here can someone tell me what i'm doing here uh in the in here anyone did i lose you okay let's go separate what's the square bracket that means It's indexing the third element from the end. Oh okay, no! So, the, the, yeah. So yeah. this is indexing the actually this, the third element from the end. So it's taking this element. Okay. And then what does it do? What does this? You see that there's a square bracket there and there. What does it do? This square bracket. So this square bracket is a way to create a list. So it's saying, I want a list. And the first element is this one. So this. And the second element, this is a comma, it's this one. So the, the, this one, what the string I've just created before. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, and here what I want to do, I want to join these two elements with a dash. So if I put this here, so we can run it. Okay, you see, I took my two elements and I put a dash in between. Okay. And so because my two elements were not in a list uh, before, I simply create the list like this on the fly. I don't need to put it in a variable before or anything. Just... Okay, so the thing after is more complicated because what we want is we want to take all of these plus all these that we just created and join all of these with an underscore. So how are we going to create this list? Here it was easy because it was just one element, but it doesn't work if we put more than one element there. Um, I can show you, and, and I can show you why it doesn't work. If you create the list with error, oh, sorry. What do you think it will create there? How many elements will be in my list? So this will create a two elements list. You see that here, because I have more than one element, it stays a list of the first element. Okay? So I have a list within a list, which is not what I want or what I need. It won't work with the join in this way. So one way to solve this is to take all of my all these elements that I want in a new list and then append my D string to it as a new element and then join all of these elements together. So if I run this to show you what it does. You see now I have a list. Instead of having two, uh, instead of here having a list, I have each element as an element of the list plus my my D string as a new element. I could have done the same here. Um, I just just to show you there are different ways of doing things, and uh, depending on what you're doing, one makes more sense than the other. Depending. And then obviously, if I run it all, you see the join works as expected. It adds, um, it adds, adds an underscore to between 
those elements of f. Is that complicated? No, is there, is there a way to like combine all that together just in one line or one command? One line? No. You would have to write a function to make it one command. Okay. Uh, it's simply because you have different separators between all your elements. And so you can only join with one separator at a time, uh, I believe. Uh, you could, you, I mean, actually there is a way you could write things complicated like um, could do the dash, join, and I want a list where I have the set from the, and then instead of having a C, I say it's a dot, dot, dot join, uh, L minus two, but it becomes V, V, quickly and readable. <laughs> or at least I find it really unreadable personally, but um, yeah. This would give you the same thing as these two lines, but um, yeah. If you don't use something like a, a notebook where it gives you the parentheses and square brackets and closing everything for you, uh, when you tap, you will be really lost very quickly in your bracket. Okay. So that was an, one example to try. Uh, it's very simple for the moment. I mean, it might not seem simple right now, but it's not necessarily something you'll do every day, but um, just to get you to get started on seeing a bit of Python. Okay, so there is after another function that's called zip. That's very hard to explain. Um, zip will, so it allows to zip together two iterables so that the first elements of the two original iterables become together the first element of the result, etc. Um, so if I look at it with two strings, and I want to create a list of the zip, it would do that. So it would take the first element of A and the first element of B and create a tuple with these two elements and it becomes the first element of my list and so on. And you can see that Carouge has more letters than Claire, so uh, it stops at the shortest and the E of Carouge is not used, it's just ignored. Uh, this example doesn't seem very useful Another useful way of doing it is, for example, creating dictionary very, quite quickly. If you already have a list of keys and a list of values, you can just do dictionary of the zip and then you get your dictionary there. Um, so that if you put your keys first and values, it will have is that, um, is that clear? Okay, so that's the end of this notebook, more or less. This is just a summary of what we've seen so far. Um, just, and with a link, if you want to see more adi uh, additional built-in functions, uh, it's a link to the Python documentation, um, because I, there's no time to go through all of them, obviously. At the end, I just want to add a few things. Uh, we haven't seen. I talked to you about the append method of the list. So if I have a one, two, and A is A, B, I do append, I have one, two, and a third element that is my list A, B. Sometimes what you want is to have one list with four elements instead. So one, one two, A, and B, and instead of just the A, B still in a list. And that's what the extend um, method does. So you see the difference. This is a four elements list. This is a three elements list. Um, so remember the difference between append and extend. Both can be useful at different times. So it's kind of nice to remember both exist. 
And um, I told you we would see an example with the one asterisk uh, at the end. That's the same exercise with the string to join. Uh, and if you remember, at the, at the end, we created a new, a new list with the three, with the first elements of the initial list and appended, append to it our, um, our previous result. We can do that differently with the asterisk operator. Um, we can say we want a list where we unpack our first elements list so they all become one element in our new list and then up uh, and then the rd is there so if i print it there um that's not what i wanted and so i will redo that sorry that would be more useful this way so uh, if i go back to l equal this list uh, L2 minus 3 is this list. And you can see that if I put the asterisk operator, it doesn't appear as a list, but just a different elements. And it appears the same as if I was writing first element, comma, second element, whatever. So it's how it does. And so this way, it's, it's what it does here. It says first element, second element, second element and then D, and then create a new list of all these. Um, this can be, you know, it's shorter to write than um, those of, so, than this. Um, and it avoids a calling a method, but obviously this is very good to use as well. It's just to give you an example of what the asterisk does. Okay, any questions? We don't have a lot of time. Um, there has been a question in the chat. Um, yeah. You suggested to use this um, dictionary and the unwinding of the dictionary for plotting. Um, and I th there was a question about how you, how, we, how you would go to do that. Um, can you make some comments about that? Yes. Um... Maybe even an example? Yeah, an example. That's what I would like. The main, the main thing would be to have an example, but um, I'm just trying to think about um, how to write an example quickly. Uh, I think I wouldn't go into too much detail at the moment, but maybe just maybe, create maybe. A, little, a little a little function that you then use with with certain keywords yes. parameters. Uh, maybe and then maybe use we. Sorry, maybe we can see that next week because next week we're going to see how to define functions. And so I can, I, I can add a function like that or I can even go and put an example about plotting and showing how it would work. Um, is that okay if we go through the question next week? I don't know who we'll asked. I think that's it, what I can see in the questions. Um, there was a question, can we use zip pairs to create different plots, but I'm not quite sure whether I get this, what, what no, she wants to do. I don't think so. Um, I think that's, um, I mean, we should probably do um, a course on plotting with MATLAB, with MATPLOTLIB yep. um, at some point in the future and how to make Plots within plots is probably certainly part of would be part of that. Yeah. Um, I think oh, yeah, what I would say is, if you have questions on plotting, it'd be good to see uh, if you could send us either your example or whatever you want to do, so that we can make the training uh, really relevant to what was creating issues for you. So. I know that a lot of people here haven't really used Python before, so anything would be uh, good to go through, but those who may have already some uh, experience with it, um, it'd be very useful for yeah, us. That's, that, that's actually a good point. If you want to um, send us, um, suggest, so if you, if you want to figure out, oh, I want to make this kind of plot, um, best send us an example, so either 
so, uh, um, uh, a picture of someone else did and ask us how how would you make this pic how would you make this plot or if you really have nothing to do go by just take a pen and pencil scribble it on a paper what you want uh, take a photo of it and send that to us um, maybe we can have uh, some ideas about that um, we also have um, for a while now let's let's talk about, let's talk about this some other time um, sorry, I was just going to remind that we already have something about plotting on the blog as well. So. Yeah. Yes, we, we have, we have um, the blog as well, which I, I will add the, add the address. I should, um, so it's pretty simple. I should put it in the chat instead. It will be easier. Ah, it's probably already got there. Um, yeah, the blog has quite a lot of things, especially uh, simple plotting, um, but it's using um, a package we haven't seen. We'll see later. So for the moment, it's um, hard. I mean, you can see that with what we've discussed today is how to do plotting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And uh, the other thing I want to remind you, um, we sent an email some time ago, I think about, um, I don't know if, what we call it, pretty, pretty find my plot or something like that. Uh, polish my plot, I think. Polish it was. my plot, yes. Uh, if you have problems making a very specific plot or whatever, you can always send um, the information there. There might always be someone who would be. Um, um, willing to help or uh, anything. And it, this would give us some ideas of what is creating issues as well in plotting, which would be useful. Okay, any other questions? No? Okay. okay. Um, thank you very much, Claire. Uh, thank you for all the people who attended. It's um, always appreciated. And uh, see you again next week when Claire will continue with her Python basics course. <laughs>